Joining us now is Sandeep Dixit, the senior Congress leader and former Delhi MP. Sandeep Dixit, big question mark over a Congress AAP alliance in next year's Lok Sabha elections and possibly even Vidhan Sabha 2025. What is your view? Do you believe such an alliance is feasible? Well, first of all, I, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe it, all this is coming because of yesterday's uh, Congress meeting on the policy and programs that Congress should have over the next few years. Uh, I don't think uh, the Congress, uh, I, I can't really say much about the High Command, but I, I don't really think the High Command has really got down to brass tacks about discussing uh, whether they should have an alliance in Delhi. If yes, with Amadmi or with whichever else group that there is. And if yes to that also, then what would be the kind of decision? So I think your question is a little premature. You know, it, uh, unfortunately, some, uh, you know, I think rather, uh, uh, you know, I said unthought of statements came on behalf of Ahmadbi and others to unnecessarily muddy the waters. Uh, I, you know my opinion as far as uh, what I think of the Ahmadbi and the chief minister and others are concerned. But let me tell you, as far as yesterday's meeting is concerned, there was hardly any discussion on the uh, or a possible alliance. We spoke much about how to strengthen the party. So I think once time comes or maybe a few other meetings are held uh, of the India Alliance, maybe that's when they really go down to state-by-state state analysis. It is then that I think this question will come up. But what is your view? Let's get it clear. What is your view on the Ahmad Party Alliance? The reason I ask you is the fact is that the Ahmad Party and the Congress are part of this grand India Alliance that was forged last month in Bengaluru. So, what is your view? Do you believe that the Ahmad Party and the Congress, is it a desirable alliance for 2024 or not? See, as far as if you take my personal opinion, and this is not uh, the Congress Party's official position, my personal thing is that I don't see any difference in either the secular politics or in the uh, right-wing politics or in the economic style or in their attitude towards corruption or towards truth or towards the constitution in which I find Ahmadmi party to be any different from the BJP. So as far as I am concerned, I believe that both are equally the same. And if we oppose the BJP, then there is, uh, according to me, no reason why we should have any truck with the party like the Ahmadmi. However, I mean, all parties change, all parties reform, and this I'm only saying as a matter of hope. I'm not, I'm quite sure this won't happen, and we'll see when the time comes. There have been parties of people who've kind of reformed themselves. The Shiv Sena has done that. Uh, you know, there was a time, if you remember, the DNK and the Congress were the biggest loggerheads. Now we are the greatest of friends. So maybe if the Amalbi party, however unreliable I believe they are, if they truly uh, give indications to the contrary, if they stop being a B team of the BJP, if they stop being what BJP always wants them to be, then maybe the Congress High Command can think of an alliance. And maybe you know, even a person like me would soften at least our personal stand. Uh, but that is my personal stand. And I don't think we should really go in for this alliance. However, as I said, if they, if they think a change uh, is happening in the Amadmi party and they do so, show some signs of that, then maybe we can consider it. But the, the thinking seems to be, at least within a section of your leadership, that R plus Congress would pose a formidable challenge to what the Congress seems to believe is their prime goal in 2024, ousting the Modi-led BJP. Now, you are saying you see no difference between AAP and BJP, and that is where the problem lies. Who is the Congress's enemy number one at the moment? Is it What is your target number one? Removing... Prime Minister Modi fighting against him as a joint alliance or in your view strengthening the Congress party. The fact is Sandeep Dixit in recent elections, the AAP has done much better than the Congress in Delhi. So what? It doesn't mean you sleep with the enemy. It, you know, if you remember in the year 1977, uh, when everybody wanted to forge an alliance against Mrs. Gandhi, that is the when the Jan, then Janta Party gave a kind of legitimacy to the BJP, uh, then, then Jansang. The Jansang which was supposed to be, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to use this word. It's, it's not a uh, you know, very nice word, but almost like an untouchable party for many. Became a one, the people came into uh, prominence and you gave a place to a party which should never have got a national position. So according to me, you know, are we doing something like that to a party that in the future will become dangerous to India's polity and its constitution? That's my biggest worry. 
I mean, otherwise, you can always say that you know, in any case, I, you know, five or six or seven seats of Delhi, uh, uh, they, they, ultimately, if it's a matter of two or three seats in election, even these seats would matter. But my firm conviction is uh, that in this kind of a thing, if we compromise uh, in a state like Delhi with the Aam Aadmi Party, we may be doing a long-term damage, in fact, more damage to the Congress than would otherwise happen. The, this party has consciously, its leader has consciously, very clearly damaged the Congress and its reputation. The kind of filth and vile uh, allegations. And remember, not a single one, forget being proved, is even been taken to the courts for investigation or even an investigation has been put against them. The vile number of allegations Kejriwal put against thousands and hundreds of our leaders. Not single one. So for a person who's come from a background like this, should we succumb to the fact that immediately we may need him in a marginal position somewhere? I personally don't think so. But the fact again, Sandeep Dixit, I repeat, this is that the AMRB party today has a government in Punjab. The AMRB party has dominated Delhi politics at least at the Vidhan Sabha level. The AMRB party showed that it could grow in some areas of Gujarat as well. Uh, when they seem to be part of your India alliance, and they've made it very clear that their prime target is to uh, fight the BJP, on what basis are you calling them the B team of the BJP? Or suggesting that the Ahmad party will eventually end up destroying the Congress? I mean, that's really the question. Where is your animus well, against uh, the uh, AAP uh, coming if, from if, if when they claim they are ready to join the India alliance and take on the BJP? Well, they claim they claim the, in, everybody in the operation was correct. Did any of that charge come true? So what they claim, according to me, is scrap. I mean, so don't give me the fact what they claim. They have claimed thousands of things. You know, they claim that they have, would have transformed mm -hmm. Delhi. So forget that, you know. Just because they claim something, it doesn't mean it becomes the truth. While too many, you know, uh, they may be the epitome of, of truth. So I don't care a damn about what they say. In Gujarat, I was there for almost the entire pe period. The, mm -hmm. There was hardly any statement of Arvind Kejriwal or his people against the BJP. They were constantly and constantly attacking the Congress. So in, in BJP, in, in Gujarat, if you really look at it, their only target was to reduce Congress's vote, not reduce the BJP's vote. Same, similarly, in Rajasthan or Madhya Pradesh, look at Karnataka. The day our government comes, it comes up with some reforms or, or you know, some subsidy issues on, mm -hmm. on, on electricity. The very next day, the Aam Aadmi Party in Karnataka and their chief minister here attacks the Congress. So have you seen this kind of attack uh, uh, you know, uh, against the BJP governments in Madhya Pradesh or against the BJP governments in other states? No. It has always been targeted. It has always been carefully done. It has always been strategized. So as far as I'm concerned, their only role and only single role is to weaken and ultimately destroy the Congress wherever it is possible for the Aam Aadmi Party to do so. So, so I come back to my original question then. Is it feasible or desirable according to you that in 2024 the AAP and the Congress should fight together as part of a grand India alliance? Or do you believe that the Congress is making a mistake by trusting the Aam Aadmi Party? Uh, Raditi, feasible, yes. I mean, feasible is, is, a, is a word uh, that's easy. Uh, anything is feasible. So I think if you want to have an alliance, alliance will happen. Uh, whether uh, Aam Aadmi Party votes get transferred to the Congress or Congress's votes get transferred to the Aam Aadmi Party, that is how, uh, you know, it depends on the chemistry between the leaders and what is the kind of primacy you give to different parties and what is the overall agenda you build in. Whether it is desirable, that is the question. As far as I am personally concerned, it is not desirable. I think we are doing fairly well in most of the states. Uh, like, you know, uh, Punjab, for example, I, you know, I don't think anybody will uh, call for an alliance because Aam Aadmi Party is today in the assembly the number one party, Congress is the number two, uh, and therefore the seats in the 13 seats in the Lok Sabha will be divided between the Aam Aadmi and party and the Congress. And if it, one of us doesn't fight in any of the states and there's alliance, mm -hmm. you'll automatically give space to BJP to become the number two party in the state. So I think it'll fairly be politically naive and stupid for either of these parties to have any alliance in Punjab because in any case, those 13 seats would be mostly, maybe maximum one or two seats may be taken by the BJP or Kalidal. It will go to the India mm -hmm. alliance. As far, the, so the only question comes is Delhi. And as I said, it's feasible in Delhi. 
Whether it will have desirable results, I'm not very sure. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, one plus one hopefully will make three and not just two. But as far as I'm personally concerned, I don't mm -hmm. think it is desirable. It's not desirable for the Congresses strengthening itself in India or the northern India. And in the long run, you know, it could be problematic for us. So, in conclusion, is your view a minority view? Do you believe that a majority of the Congress party, especially at the leadership level, shares your concern? Or is Sandeep Dixit a bit of an outlier when he says, let's not have anything to do with the Ahmadmi party, no difference between BJP and AAP? Okay, uh, uh, let me be honest. I, ha I, I'm not really in touch with many of the Delhi leaders and I've not been very active in Delhi Congress for a long period of time. So I can't really say with confidence. I know the leaders I have spoken to. Uh, th there are one, only one or two who are active on the social media world and have conveyed their viewpoint that they are not for this alliance. Uh, generally, when I speak to leaders and the leaders that I know I've been in touch with and whenever we have our personal thing, uh, I find, a, I won't even say a majority, a near unanimous belief that no, we must not have anything to do with the Ahmadi party. But I think uh, uh, what the high command will decide, what equations they will have in front of them, what will be the pressure of other uh, you know, partner parties in the India alliance, all that will have to be seen. But all I can say, and I can say with a lot of confidence, is that the leaders I know in Delhi, the people I am in touch with and who converse with me with a sense of confidence and, and a kind of a personal trust, uh, I haven't seen anybody who advocates for an alliance. So, how much of this though, Sandeep Dixit, is because Arvind Kejriwal took on your late mother, Sheila Dixit, and uh, in a way toppled her government uh, or defeated her in elections and formed the government first in 2013 and of course then 2015 onwards. How much of this animus, if I may use the word against Arvind Kejriwal, is because of what happened in that period? It is, we are now in 2023. Are you still living with the scars of what happened between 2013 and 15? Look, everybody lives with whatever scars they have. So if I deny that, uh, you know, I don't want to lie and I do, normally don't make these, uh, you know, politically correct uh, sweet statements all the time. Everybody has their scars. But my problem in Ahmadmi is not the fact that they just defeated us. It's the kind of politics that they exercise of untruth, of wrong, of cheating, of, uh, of vile words. Uh, they are really the first people who cheapened, uh, you know, uh, uh, Rashtrawadi politics and brought it onto the field. They were the first people who started using the tricolor to divide people politically. They are the first people who started using the slogan of Bharat Mata on the streets to make it a political slogan like that, the slogan of pride for all Indians. So there's hardly any wrong that is there in politics today that does not have its roots in either the India against corruption movement or in the way and manner in which they did so. They are the first people, many of us, I mean, I've seen sometimes some of you also saying so, that often the Prime Minister makes claims without facts. The Prime Minister derides his opponents without a, you know, any merit in his uh, things and he, and he makes claims to things that he is not really his. Who's really... Uh, you know, almost a kind of a grandfather of his and almost everything of this. It is Arvind Kejriwal. So if you look at the, the politics of Kejriwal, mm -hmm. the style of the Ahmadmi party, then I think it's a very, very big problem. We cannot encourage politics of this kind. And as far as I'm concerned, obviously there will be a personal baggage also that I carry. There's a personal baggage that everybody carries. Okay. But apart from that, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you want a serious so, opinion, I think they are far more dangerous to India's polity than any other party or any other person is. And the kind of traditions they put on ground are going to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if eventually the India alliance does take off and Arvind Kejriwal, Rahul Gandhi share a platform and Delhi does see seat sharing between Congress and AAP, will you continue to remain in the Congress or will you, is this an issue where you will break with the party that you have been part of? No, no, I'm a congressman. I'm a congressman, uh, more uh, a congress person than I think most of the other congress person I meet. Okay? And it is my sworn duty and my belief that I tell the party whatever I feel is right. Ultimately, whatever the party decides, obviously we'll follow that. I mean, there's no issue about that. It's concerned. But I, I'm not somebody who will not say things in public 
or to my party leaders, whether it suits them or not. I, I've been known to say my things. I may have suffered because of that. In fact, remain on the margins of my party because often I'm supposed to be even irresponsibly open with my views. That's not my concern. I say what I feel like. Let me give you an example, Radhiji. You know that I was for this ordinance that came across, right? And I've been saying that uh, this ordinance should be passed. But as yes. I always said, that suppose I were a member of the Raj Sabha or a member of the Lok Sabha, right? And while the fact that I support the ordinance, okay, if it had come to vote for it, my vote belongs to my party. I would not have been a member of parliament if I have not been a member of the Congress party. So I would have voted for whatever is the three-line whip my party would have given that. In that sense, uh, uh, in the ultimate mm -hmm. analysis, I will follow what my party leaders tell me. Because I sometimes feel that maybe, you know, because they are in a senior position, uh, maybe they have a slightly greater wisdom or a hindsight that I may not be having at that particular point of time. Right. As far as leaving the Congress is concerned, there is no way. Uh, you might find me the last man standing in the party and so it will be. So what you are telling us that if you had to advise Malikarjun Kharge and Rahul Gandhi, you would advise them, it is not desirable in your view to go ahead with an alliance with AAP in the 2024 elections. Am I correct? Yes, if, if I'm ever asked. Uh, let me also put in yesterday's meeting, no such question was asked okay. and this topic was not even discussed. But if I'm ever asked, whether by them or anybody senior in the party, that's the, the I will give my reasons for it. Uh, you know, uh, there are m many more reasons for it. I mean, we can't really uh, put all of them across to you in this uh, TV interview. I'll put my reasons across to them. Okay. I think you've been very candid as always, uh, Sandeep Dixit, given us your perspective. Uh, I appreciate your joining us and telling us what apparently many privately within the Delhi, Delhi Congress believe at the moment. Thank you very much for joining me.